One of the most common questions I get from incoming mess students is, how do I study? And what resources do I need? Do I need textbooks? Do I need to start studying for step one right away? Do I need to be smart to do well in med school? Okay, everybody, just take a deep breath. I'm a fourth year medical student and if there's anything that I know how to do well at this point, it's to study. So in this video, I'm going to share a little bit of wisdom about how I figured out how to study smarter, not harder in med school, and whether or not I think that I paid off in the long run. If you're new here, my name is Kelly. I'm a fourth year med student currently applying to internal medicine and primary care residencies. My channel is very new. I actually started out on Instagram as at Kelly Takes Medicine. So if you aren't following me on there yet, you definitely should because all my best advice is on there and if you are a subscriber thank you for being here you probably followed me here from Instagram and I appreciate you thank you for trusting me to continue to guide you on your journey so I feel like I should share my stats just so I have some credibility and so you know that I know what I'm talking about first of all I'm not a naturally gifted not naturally smart and I'm actually a slower learner I'm very forgetful and I felt like I was always one step behind my peers but having to try harder and to study harder but I ended up in the second quartile of my class and it's not the first quartile but it's also not the last either so no you do not have to be smart to do well in med school and by well I mean like B's and B pluses first to study in med school you have to get into the right mindset so a lot of your classes in the beginning of med school is going to be on the hard sciences and most of it is not going to be very interesting some of it will if you have good professors they're going to try to like clinically correlate the material to like real life examples and that's what makes the material interesting but not every professor is going to do that for you so you're going to have to do some of that on your own for example if you're learning about an enzyme and like a biochemical pathway and you know you find out that if you don't have this enzyme then you get this condition so things like that even if it's not very interesting material just pretend like a lot of the things that you are gonna do in med school you're just gonna pretend that you know how to do and it's just fake it till you make it second thing about mindset is that you have to pretend that you're never going to see that material again the third thing is to be flexible and be willing to adapt so just because something works for you in college does not mean at all that it's going to work for you in med school in fact i think most people coming in from coming to med school from straight from college had to change up their their study strategies because the pace of med school is a lot different from college. Okay, so it's been a while since I've had to like study, study, but let me share with you like what I did during my M1 and M2 days. If there's anything that you take away from this video, it's repetition, Anki, divide and conquer. Okay, I know I said that you have to study like you're never going to see the material again, but that's just to get you into the right mindset. Go through the material three times, no more, no less. That's just what I personally recommend because I feel like if you're going through each pass in a high quality way, then you don't need any more. I just feel like any more than that, you're just gonna drive yourself crazy. For whatever reason, I'm missing a clip, so I had to refilm this part. But for your passes, your first pass is going to be like your first time ever seeing the material, whether it's you going to class or you watching the lecture online. I personally never went to class because I prefer to watch at my own pace because I'm a slower learner. And so I would watch it at home and watch it at at like 1.5 times speed sometimes two times speed the professor is talking slow and then I would pause take notes on what's important and things like that and then your second pass is going to be you using Anki and you going through the Anki cards and pulling them and unsuspending them and I'll come back to this later but you're just typing in like keywords from the lecture to find the relevant Anki cards and then studying them and then third pass is when you're going to divide and conquer so third pass for me me is typically the weekend before the exam or like a week before the test and I would like take all the lectures say if I had 30 lectures I would divide it in half and then the weekend before the exam I would like on Saturday I would go through 15 lectures and then on Sunday I would go through the other 15 lectures just to like um, refresh and make sure I'm not missing anything okay while I'm going through my third pass I'm actually making a study guide I'm making a study guide of material that I did not see covered in Anki, just so that I just so that I'm not missing anything for the exam for the class. This way, you have the material from 
that you learned from class some more if it's not in Anki. So you're probably thinking, how am I going to remember what was not covered in Anki? Trust me, if you are using Anki properly, you are going to remember that something wasn't in Anki. I feel like when I was going through med school, I was studying for an exam, like there's always a time where I was like, that was definitely not an Anki card. Like if it was not an Anki, I don't know it. And that's just the beauty of spaced repetition. Okay, let's pause. So for the lectures, you're probably wondering, there's so much information, there's so much material, like how am I gonna know what's important? Like what do I need to take notes on? So pay attention to cues from the professor. If they're spending a lot of time talking about it, it's probably important, so start that. If they say that is gonna be on the exam, obviously pay attention to that. If they are talking about like kinases and pathways and yada yada yada, and then they mention a disease that's caused by a deficiency of this enzyme or whatever, then that's important. So anything that is clinically relevant is relevant. Another example is something that I noticed, especially during my foundational science courses like biochem, pharmacology, etc. The exam tended to have material that was based on the professor's research. So if like I had this professor who is like an expert researcher in like um, collagen on the exam, there were like a few questions about that and that's because that was like his research topic. So pay attention to that. The other thing is, if it's not a first aid, it's probably not important or high yield for step one at least. And if it's not an Anki, it's also probably not important. So that's the beauty of Anki. Okay, now we can talk about Anki. The Anki step one deck is gold. I repeat, the Anki step one deck is gold. I tried using Anki a couple times and gave up, but I promise you it is 100% worth it. You just have to invest about like 10 minutes one weekend to learn how Anki works. Like I almost gave up, but I'm really glad that I did. Yes, there is a learning curve to learning how to use Anki, but it is worth it. I will link the video. I will try to like attach up here somewhere the video tutorial that was created by the Anki. And then I'll also link my blog post that I made. It's called Anki for Dummies for people who are really new to Anki. And like I even included videos of, of like how to unsuspend cards and all of that. So invest one day to try to learn it. Trust me, you will not regret it. It's a tried and true method. There's like research studies done on space repetition. Like it, it really does work and this is coming from like a fourth year med student who still remembers things that I learned from Anki. So you're gonna need some add-ons to unsuspend cards efficiently. Unsuspend is like pulling them. So when you first open the Anki step one deck, I recommend you just suspend all the cards, meaning that you're just putting them on pause, you're not pulling them yet, you're not seeing them. And then as you're going through lectures, you just search keywords from the lecture. Like if you know, for example, like PKU, like just search PKU or not PKU, the actual, like spell it out. And then the, all the cards will come up. You also need like the hierarchical tags add-on, which is an add-on that pretty much is how the Onking Step 1 deck is organized. Like you can go to the tag on the sidebar and then the tag is gonna contain all the cards related to that topic, um, which the tag is named after. So again, do this during your second pass of your lectures. Do the cards that you pulled every single day. So if you're pulling cards, they're probably gonna be new cards. And then if you're already starting, uh, if you've already started the Anki process, you're gonna do cards that are due for review. So you're gonna review old cards that you've already seen and then new cards for that day from lecture and do this every single day. So Anki usually takes about like, for me, like two to three hours. I would go through, I don't know maybe like 100 new cards and then maybe like 200 uh, reviews every day so this I don't know would take me two to three hours more or less pick a time during your day where you're most productive for me this is like at night time I would save it for the night time or like early morning when I'm like commuting to school or something so Anki makes studying super easy because you don't have to think about what you need to review. It's already gonna show you cards that it thinks you're about to forget, so you don't forget them. Another super, super important point I want to make is do not make your own Anki cards. Like I repeat, do not make your own Anki cards because it's a waste of your time. I know a lot of people make Anki cards. They spend like five hours making Anki cards and they spend more time making them than actually doing them. So I don't recommend it. I know somebody who did that and who stopped doing that. And he told me that it, he didn't learn better. It's not like he retained it better just by making the cards. So just for efficiency, to study smarter, just try to avoid making your own cards. So a few days before the exam, go through your Anki deck and unsuspend all the cards related to the block that you're on. Because there's gonna be some cards that you didn't pull during your second pass that you just 
this maybe because you didn't put in the right keyword just unsuspend all of it so for example if i'm on cardiology i'm going to just unsuspend and pull all those cards that i just missed and didn't study and then i'm going to just study them this is just to make sure you're not missing anything the second thing that i would recommend doing is opening first aid and just going through that relevant section if you're on cardiology go through all the cardiology this is kind of be this is going to kind of be like your study guide and it's going to tell you like what the high yield material is not just for step one but like clinically and even if your class is not gonna test you on that material it's still very good to know in the long run okay I'm gonna diverge a little bit just to talk briefly about like first aid step one you don't have to start studying for step one right away but it helps to study a little bit like every day like I'm not seriously studying for step one throughout you know first and second year of med school it's just more like for example the studying that I would do would be just opening first aid before an exam and then doing the Anki cards from the Anking step one deck which for the most part does correlate with like most of the material uh, in your classes at. now that step one is pass fail people are asking if I would use the same method of studying I think I would still use it I just feel like because step one is so important for step two and clinicals like I just feel like it's worth it a few days before your exam you're also gonna go through the study guide that you made during your third pass of the lectures so at this point there's no need to go through all the lectures again before the few days before the exam because you've hopefully already done that like a few days prior like a week prior um, so now you're just making sure you're keeping up with your Anki reviews that's super super important and you're going through the study guide that you made before the exam and then going through first aid if you have time study with with a partner with the first aid open and like just test each other I can't tell you there are so many times when I was on a, when I was taking an exam and I was like oh my god like so-and-so asked me about this and then I would remember and be able to recall it so it's super helpful if you can find a partner and just like test each other um, another thing that I found super helpful was testing somebody on a topic that I wasn't good at so that I could just remember and retain it and like teaching it to them that process was incredibly helpful for re re retention okay if you have time you you can go through Pathoma and Sketchy during the relevant blocks. So for example, during my micro and immunology block, I would go through Sketchy Micro. In hindsight, I would have wished to have done the Anki cards of the Anki Step 1 deck related to Sketchy. And now that Step 1 is pass fail, it probably doesn't matter, so I think it's enough for you to just watch the sketchy video. Same thing with Pathoma. This is more relevant during your second year of med school when you're on organ system. So Pathoma is like very small and it's very short, concise and only high yield information. And so I would also open Pathoma like before an exam just to see like what the high yield material was because it's so short and it doesn't take up that much time okay some wisdom looking back my classes are past fails I still try my best to do well and I think that I think it paid off in the long run if I'm to be honest because I still remember material from like first and second year but only the important material so like just by the process of like how I studied I was able to like remember what's actually important your first two years of med school don't really matter like how you do on your classes in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter but the caveat is that if you're applying to very competitive specialties like OBGYN or like any other surgical specialty, they do look at your class quartile. So that's where I would say it does matter. It's really about studying smarter to gain knowledge, not just for the exam. You're studying to gain knowledge that will serve your patients, right? And I think that's super important. Like you have to study not for the test, but for your patient. That's really all guys. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment with all your questions.